Hey everyone, welcome back to Horse 2 Cinema. And today I've got actually a two-part review uh, for a movie called The Souvenir. Part two is just coming out now, whereas uh, part one, I believe, was released in, two in 2019. This movie was directed by Joanna Hogg, a really underrated uh, English filmmaker. And it stars, I believe it's the breakout role for Honor Swinton Byrne, who is the daughter of Tilda Swinton, who is also in the movie. This film tells the story of a young film student who is on the verge of finishing, she's trying to finish her graduation film. And on her way to doing this, she gets into a relationship with a slightly the older man who is, as we come to find out throughout the film, quite troubled. And kind of the difference between part one and part two is that part one is more about exploring this relationship uh, between her and this uh, troubled man, whereas part two is more about the aftermath of the relationship and how that informs her experiences, especially in film school. Now I really enjoy both of these movies, and before I get into the, the, the big reasons for that, I do just want to talk about the, the, the technical aspects of both of them that I really like. First of all, both are just gorgeous looking. Uh, they were both clearly shot on film. You can see that kind of grainy quality. There's lots of purple in this movie. It's a very good color and it's quite fitting actually, I think for the mood that they're trying to do. There are some really, really well-directed sequences as well, especially in part two, when our main character Julie finally has her film debut uh, towards, towards the end of part two and we sort of see a version of what her film is, I kind of think it wasn't exactly her film. It doesn't really play out like a normal movie, it's it, it's more of this like weird, uh, you know, 10 to 15 minute experience, kind of like if you've ever seen The Red Shoes, that experience about an hour into the movie that sort of is just completely different than anything else you've ever seen in this film or really in any other film. And there's really good acting in, in all in both of these movies. Honor Swinton Byrne is definitely an actress to keep an eye out for in the coming years. She was so, so good in both these movies. Tilda Swinton is in, is in it a lot, um, especially in the second movie. She plays, she plays uh, the mother, which is funny because she's actually uh, her mother in real life. And she fills that role pretty well, especially in the second film. Tom Burke as Anthony is like this really, really tragic character I'll kind of get into in a minute. But uh, yeah, wow, he really just kind of um, embodies these re these dark aspects that they're trying to go for super well. And then there's this guy, uh, Richard Iowade. I th I'm probably really butchering that, but um, that's how I'm, I think his name is pronounced. He is so fucking funny in this mo in in both of these movies. There's this great sequence in part two where he just plays this really like pretentious uh, director type dude. And uh, they're they're trying to edit the, his movie, and he has this uh, Goodfellas funny how moment where like so, where he just asks uh, this his editor like no what did it make you feel and he just keeps going on and on he's very funny in the movie so, yeah so now I will kind of want to get into a little bit of what both films um, do I think do really well overall but before I do I do want to say a little bit of a cautionary note with this because I think uh, especially part one wasn't received nearly as well by audiences as it was with critics so in reading a lot of those reviews. The, my biggest takeaway is don't go into it expecting like a normal story format because it's not. It is very much a day in the life or a year in the life type of story. It's a window into these people's lives. It doesn't it doesn't play out like a normal story does because life doesn't play out like a normal story does. And it's also not as accessible or relatable as something like Lady Bird, for example, which does take that kind of same approach. And I think part of the reason for that is because part part one especially is a story about a toxic relationship, which is not something that everyone can grasp onto. I'll give a little spoiler warning here, I guess, but Anthony is actually a heroin addict. And not only is he just kind of an asshole, but he's also very emotionally manipulative in this relationship. And in reading a lot of reviews, a lot of the issues people had with it was, well, I just don't see anything redeeming in this character. I don't understand why, um, you know, the character of Julie is interested in this uh, character of Anthony at all. But I think if that's their takeaway from the movie, you might have missed the point a little bit. The entire point of this relationship is that there is nothing redeeming about him, uh, but yet she's attached to him anyway. That is often how real relationships play out. We often love people that are extremely flawed, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that it feels le anything less like love um, that you know to us at the time. I really like that this kind of feels like a genuinely. Uh, honest way of, of uh, Joanna Hogg, who has experienced this kind of thing herself, for her to tell this story because um, she didn't, you know, insert any, you know, uh, character building stuff into it to try and get us to, you know, be attached to this guy because, you know, we're not supposed to feel that way. Uh, we're just supposed to see that Julie feels that way and we're sp sort of supposed to wonder why that is. I mean, that's kind of the whole point. And again, another little spoiler warning for this part, but Anthony does pass away towards the end of the film. He has a heroin overdose, essentially. And kind of what I was talking about, um, you know, Anthony dying sort of represents that we're, 
Uh, it, when somebody passes away who's close to us, we long for the person so much that we even want to look on the, the really negative aspects of that person's life, perhaps in a uh, you know, longing um, and sort of nostalgic way, because the absence of that is so much worse than reliving those feelings again. So yeah, I think part one was like this really brilliant exploration of uh, a toxic relationship, and I haven't e I haven't seen a film that uh, quite like this. Now, part two, I was kind of expecting that they would sort of explore the aftermath of the relationship and uh, how you know how sad and troubled uh, Julie's life must be, how maybe that interferes with her film. Uh, with her cre uh, finishing her graduation film, but that's actually not what it is at all, really. You do see how it sort of affects her life, but it doesn't really negatively impact her film. The interesting thing is it actually enhances it in some ways. So in part one, she was going to make a movie about the working class lives of people in Northern England, something that's kind of just like a slice of life movie, sort of like how The Souvenir is. But she got a lot of feedback from her teachers that it didn't really feel very personal or anything and then she decided to make a movie about Anthony. Make a movie about this sort of toxic relationship and uh, and what that can do to a person. Now because it's a quite a personal thing, her teachers initially warn her against this because they're like, well you can get into some really uh, troubling territory with that in terms of getting, you know, making a good film. And even though she's warned against it, like I said, it turns out actually really well. The film is, you know, pretty well received by her teachers. She ends up graduating and doing fine. And on the way to making this film, I mean, I just, I just love the way it depicts the, you know, the creative process, and not just with something like a film that only like art students could relate to, but you know, I do like political science, for example, and I'm doing this massive like undergraduate dissertation research project thing, and I just relate so much to how, to what a struggle it is to put these little details of a project together. I think almost anyone could relate to that. And more than anything, I think what the second part says is how much our creative process. Uh, is informed by our personal experiences, both uh, positive and negative, and how that comes across as so much more genuine and, has, and is so much more impactful than something you sort of look at from a bird's eye view and, you know, you, can, you might be able to understand the mechanisms of it, but you don't really have, know how that makes you feel. And it's really meta in that sense because apparently, you know, jo Joanna Hogg had a really bad, um, you know, relationship and, and she's kind of exploring all, all of these aspects of her life uh, in, in, this, in this film. And I think really when you put part one and part two together, this is a brilliant story. And I'm super glad, um, you know, these films came out. And I wish this kind of movie could be just a little bit more, you know, in the mainstream than it is, because this is kind of mostly just showing at art house theaters, especially here in like Ireland and the UK. I don't even know if this is playing in the US at the moment. But yeah, so if I, if I had to grade these films, I'd give them both, let's say four and a half stars. I think they're really, really good movies. But yeah, that's my review. Uh, if you like this video, you can uh, like the video down below. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want. And uh, I've got more content coming out soon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.